Welcome to another flip video lesson with Mr. Volkman. Now, depending on, I guess, your age, which you could be in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, um, you may or may not know what I was just whistling. Now, your parents might know. That, my dear students, is a theme song to The Flintstones, because it's a yabba dabba good cartoon created way back when. It's also a great introduction to what this flip video is going to be about, which is early humans. The Flintstones was a cartoon all about that, the life of early humans. Though, you know, the creators took a few liberties about what that early life would have been like. Hence, the dinosaur dog riding in the car and the television made out of rock and the couch made out of rock. Though the cave paintings, if you remember from the previous chapter, look mighty realistic. So please, with all flip videos, if there's anything you do not understand this flip video, please remember to pause it and to rewatch it a second or third time. Before we actually get into the meat of this flip video, there's a couple terms we need to talk about. The first is hominids. The hominids just refer to prehistoric humans. What's prehistoric or prehistory mean? Say that again? I didn't hear you through my, my computer screen. Okay, if you said prehistory is the time before history was actually written down, you're correct. So we're referring to a time when humans lived where there was no written history. Paleoanthropologists are the men and women who study the development and culture of earliest humans. Now, unlike some of their other colleagues who have written work in front of them, paleoanthropologists don't necessarily have that always. So as we've talked about, um, they have to make educated guesses based on the artifacts, whether there's a lot or a small amount that they have. So let's begin some more. Before I get into this, I do want to let you know that there are different viewpoints on um, how to look at early hominids or early humans. And these viewpoints really depend upon your worldview, on, on your beliefs. And that's something I'll get into here a more a little bit. Um, but let's look at one viewpoint of early humans. First off, and I'm probably going to butcher these names, so I apologize. We have Australopithecus afarensis. Eh. These are what some scientists believe were the earliest hominids. And this middle picture is what they think the skeletons look like. Now again, we don't have full skeletons of these um, early humans, so they've kind of pieced together, much like a puzzle, of what they think it would have looked like. Now there were some similarities um, to these early humans to present day humans. However, there were some differences as well. As you can see um, in this picture here, there are some physical characteristics that they share. Something um, very important to know about this early human was that they did not use tools, which made life probably very, very difficult. And you'll read more about what some scientists feel about these early humans in your textbook. Next we have Homo habilis, way easier to say. Now these early humans were more modern than Aust oh, Australopithecus afarensis, something like that. They actually used simple tools. They also lived in groups. So we can assume from the statement that the previous hominid or early human that I talked about did not live in groups. And here is a skull that has been pieced together. Now the darker parts of the skull are parts that scientists put together based on, as we talked about, an educated guess. I mean, they're, they're, they're sure it looks like that, but not 100% because it, this wasn't there. Next we have Homo erectus. Now these early hominids, these early humans, were stronger and more human looking. As we can tell, here is a skull of a Homo erectus, and here's a skull of a Homo sapien. Now it's kind of cut off because of the picture I got off the internet, but as you can tell, it does look a little more human. They used more complex tools, so they were able to do even more than Homo habilis was able to, and even more than the first one that I can't pronounce very well. Now, Homo erectus would have used fires. They would have built homes. 
And as a result of all of that, they live longer. I mean, what's better, eating raw meat or cooked meat? Yeah, raw meat can make you sick if you've ever had that before. The next early hominid I'd like to discuss is the Homo sapiens neanderthalusness. Yes, those isses get me. Now these had the best tools of any previous early humans or hominids. And the tools they had, they used for multiple purposes. As a result, they were able to live longer because they had tools that helped them live better. Their society was also more organized as well. And I think had they heard that bell, they may have freaked out because I don't know if they had bells like that back then. The last early hominid, early human I want to discuss is the Homo sapiens sapiens. Now these were more familiar to what we're like now. They're also very creative and they used the most complex tools and had the most complex culture from any of the previous groups that I have discussed. Now with all these different types of early hominids, early humans, you will read more about in your textbook in class. Beginning of this flip video, I talked about how there are some different viewpoints on what early humans or prehistoric humans were like. And I said the opinions of what you feel these early hominids were like depended upon your worldview. Now this is what I mean. There are some scientists who, when they look at early humans, look at, as, look at early humans as less evolved, meaning physically they're not like us, intellectually they're not like us, so they're kind of like us, but totally different. They're not as evolved, as I said, as modern humans. Now there are other scientists who have a different worldview. When they see bones of early hominids, what they see is humans like us, but who maybe physically are a little different, but they're not any less evolved than we are. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about this viewpoint as well. Oh, wrong slide, so here we go. So without eyewitness account of burials of these bones that we've found, how can we know for sure that the dates are accurate? We can't go back and look. There's no written record. So it is just an educated guess as to when these bones are actually dated. They could be billions or millions of years old, or they could be hundreds of thousands of years old. We, we don't know. So for example, scientists have, have uncovered, uncovered new Neanderthal bones, and they've dated them as to living further past in time than people previously found. So this kind of changes the timeline of when people thought Neanderthals actually walked the earth. So this just goes to show again that when we first find bones, we, we, our dates, we don't know the exact dates. Because again, we don't have any written primary sources. We weren't there. Another idea, something else to think about is this. When we uncover bones, skeletal fragments, it's just that. They're fragments of prehistoric humans. We don't have the whole skeleton to know what humans look like way back long time ago. As this picture here is of Lucy who is, um, was of the very first um, hominid I talked about, the one that I had a hard time pronouncing, the Austri Australo, I can't even pronounce it again. So these are the bone fragments we have. This here is a computer um, rendering of what we think this hominid would have looked like. As you can see, the white is the computer generated, the brown was the actual bone. We have probably more computer generated than we do of bones. So thinking of that, if you're a scientist and you view hominids as lesser beings, as not as evolved as present day humans, you're going to view what's missing in that light as well. On the flip side, if you don't view early prehistoric per, uh, man as less evolved, you're going to view the missing pieces as differently as well. Whatever it is, whatever your worldview is, whatever side you take on how long ago or what early humans look like, they're all educated guesses because we just, we just don't know. 
Now, last, and I think this is the most important thing of all, of what this other viewpoint is, is that instead of viewing these bones as maybe less evolved types of humans, we can look at the diversity of different humans. Um, look at how humans long ago lived and how they were different than what we are. Yes, the bones and the bone fragments we have looks as though early hominids look different than us, and it could be because they were less evolved. As some people think that they started, we started as apes and became human, or maybe we were all just one type of human from the very get-go of when Earth was created. For example, there are scientists now who look at these early hominid bones and say, well, these prehistoric humans look different, maybe because of what they ate, maybe because of diseases. I mean, you think about it nowadays and you look at humans from different countries and even in different countries, we look different. You know, some people have different facial features. Sometimes the bones make your face look a little different. So I think that's what this other viewpoint is pointing at. Now, you'll be reading a lot more in the textbook in class. Um, I apologize for the slightly longer flip video than what you normally have um, been used to so far this year. Again, if there's anything in this video you did not understand, please rewind it and watch it again. Um, and on Edmodo, you will have the assignment to take to get credit for watching this video. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. Did I miss it? Ah! I thought Mr. Volkman was showing an episode of the Flintstones. I heard the theme song. I love it. Wilma! Gets me every time.